We are back at the Air Zoo Restoration Center to check in with the team as they tackle two incredible restoration projects. The Douglas SPD-1 Dauntless and the consolidated PBY Catalina. So let's hand it off to Restoration Manager Greg Ward to find out the progress of our SPD-1. Well, one advantage we have is we this is our third SPD. We did a, we're kind of going in reverse. We did an SPD-3 out of Lake Michigan. That took eight years. Then we got a wildcat out of the lake. That was underwater for 68 years. And that took an 11 year process to get done. Then we did an SBD-2P simultaneously. And that one we took five years and three months and we took it over to Pearl Harbor. That's on exhibit over there for the rest of its day. And now we're doing the world's only remaining SBD-1 which is a real honor because it's the only one left and the guys are really going to town to, to, to detail the instruments, the switches, all the systems. Now the airplane won't fly but every you know since it's our third SVD we're getting it figured out to where they can they just keep getting better and better and better. This airplane had two 50 caliber machine guns that are stationary in the front uh, a, one single 30 caliber flex gun, they call it, in the back seat facing aft. And uh, those, those are all here. They're, of course, we're putting replica guns in. Um, they're not real. And all the instruments have been restored back to mint condition. New silk screen gauges, new glass. It was necessary to do that because this was on the bottom of Lake Michigan for I don't know, 70 years, and uh, when it goes down to about 200 foot of depth, the glass has a tendency to break from the pressure. So we have to send all those gauges out to be redo, redone, and they, they had radium paint on the gauges, which is cancer causing, and they, we have to pay for, to to get each gauge, get the, the radium removed by a facility that's licensed to do that. And then they make new silk screen dials with paint that resembles radium. How, however, it won't glow in the dark. But it looks correct. So that's, I think we're getting close to the point where this uh, fuselage is going to have to, we're going to have to pull these boardwalks off and roll it down to the paint booth. And the next step is to paint it metallic silver. And then once that is successful, and we're all done with the metallic silver paint to our satisfaction, then we'll have to paint wing walks using the black non-skid paint. Uh, all the artwork, numbers, there's red, white, and blue that goes on the rudder. Um, a green band that goes underneath the cowling, only on the lower half. The wings, the top of the wings are yellow, which are beautiful, and those will have a diagonal green stripe. And right now they're working on laying out the artwork for the stars and the, the insignia. So. Originally, we were shooting for Christmas of this year. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen. Uh, that was our goal. If you don't have a target date, the guys will keep working on this forever because they love to work on it. And of course, it would keep getting better and better and better and better. But we can't work on it forever. We have to finish it. So the rudder, both ailerons and both elevators still have to be covered in fabric and go through that whole paint process. So I'm thinking uh, February, March, maybe April. Um, I don't think it has a home yet, so that means it may be here a little while on, a, on display, which we're very happy about that. Uh, that, which could give us a little more time. But the balancing act that we have is we've got the Silver Cup rocket restoration coming back into the shop, and that's big. So we're going to need a place to work on it. And then the wings for the PBY are currently underway. And those are, what, 30 feet long each, and that's not counting the center section. So 
This shop is going to get real full real quick. That's why we need to get this SVD done and out of here and uh, on exhibit somewhere in the air zoo. I don't know if Troy will want to take it over to the main building and put it on exhibit somewhere over there. I don't know. We'll just, whatever they want, we'll do it. Because our SPD-1 was in service with the United States Marine Corps during the interwar period, it will sport an unusual paint scheme for the type. Bold yellow wings with a silver fuselage and splashes of green. I caught up with Gordon, who's preparing the wings for its roundels, numbering, and other details. Get back here and you can see them. We got the big roundel, we got the uh, chevron, and the number 15. So we're kind of playing with locating them. We noticed that the wings are different. Two different wings. Apparently this one was in a crash at some time. They did some repair. So they're off about half an inch. And in order to make them look the same, we had to make some minor adjustments, but nobody's going to know. Except for everybody who watched this video. Except for everybody who's watching this video, yeah. <laughs> so, it's coming. Uh, Justin is painting the uh, third and fourth yellow coat on the flaps right now. We'll locate them next week and then I can locate that chevron because the chevron goes over the flaps as well. So once that's down, we'll pencil line them, we'll start masking. The bottom is going to be painted uh, silver and then I got to put the round nails underneath. Once everything's masked, we'll put paint on those. I was a technical illustrator drafting for 41 years. So, and I like I like the final work, the finished work. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And there's a matter of, of pride that's going to go on for a long time, you know. And I'm I feel very honored to do this. From finishing the wings to restoring the smallest of items tucked away in those wings, the pride of a job well done flows throughout the restoration center. Right here is the right here is the approach lamp, so the LSO officer would know when the SBD's, la SBD's landing at night, how it'd be coming in. And uh, here is what goes into it. There are uh, three glass lenses in here. And this is like the first time it's lit up since uh, World War II. And you can see as it's approaching how that worked. So you could tell, I think uh, Greg would say, red is dead and you know, you see yellow and then green, you know, you're set to go. So this is the original and uh, we'll be using it for display because it's really, a, as you can see, a bit corroded and we have a nicer newer one in there. And um, yeah, it's fascinating what you learn along the way. And um, there's one of the schematics. So I think some of the Wildcats had this uh, and then the SPD-1 and then they went on to change how that works, so different colors and such. Like the months before, the engine slowly but surely creeps closer to completion. Tell me about this engine, what's going on? It, I, I, it's been here for a long time and I've seen you know more and more get added yes. to it. How, how complete are we on the engine front? Uh, I'd say 95% getting close. It's slow but sure and we're it's getting close, <laughs> all I can say. And all that hard work of restoring the engine will almost be immediately covered up, thanks to the hard work of volunteers like Ray. I am working on the cowling ring that supports the cowling to the engine. <laughs> it is real finicky, yeah. And one of the problems is we get it to fit on the cowling then we got to take it apart and make sure it fits on the engine. And how confident it'll, you think it'll fit on the engine? When I get done, 100%. Right now, only about 50. <laughs> but the only piece that was that was original was one one quarter of this. Everything else had had to be handmade. Uh, I've been working on this ring for about four weeks now. I have, I have mainly worked on the engine. I've worked on the landing gear a little bit. We put the tires on 
and then from there I went to the engine and when the engine got got busy with people I moved over here to the cowling to help out Ken Kelly. So a jack of all trades? Yes. Master of? All of them. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, many of our volunteers are jack of all trades and master of most. One of the masters of the cockpit, Fred, is in there installing another panel. I'm in the process of uh, in mounting this lower instrument panel. In order to do that, I've installed uh, two of the gauges in the center section. That gives me access to the vibration isolators, also known as Lord mounts. And then the screws are put through the top and the bottom. I'm in the process of tightening that right now. And then once that's done, I'll add the other two gauges from the back side and I'll put the screws in. And then that portion will be done. Um, we've got a fuel quantity gauge. There's a couple different versions of that. And the other two will be the same thing for right and left tanks. Well, this is the, this is the, uh, the third instrument panel that I've installed now. And the final instrument panel will be up here at the top. And uh, once some of this canopy uh, uh, section has been completed, um, I'll install that along with the final installation of the compass. The bracket is, the bracket is currently in the, in the panel. I just simply need to put the compass in it. And that'll sort of be the end of the instrument installation. Very good. The SBD restoration continues towards its eventual completion early next year. But many volunteers have already moved on to our new project, the massive PBY Catalina that we're restoring for our friends at the Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum. Earlier, the guys successfully removed the props from the two engines and mounted them on new prop stands. This process went mostly hassle-free, aside from some oil that was still hanging around in the propeller hub. Nothing that some turkey basters couldn't handle. Currently, most of the work on the PBY have been on the stabilizer, as that was the only bit of the airplane that we could fit in a restoration bay. Our resident riveter, Bill, gives us a status update. Um, we're actually doing well. We've got the uh, majority of the skin's almost ready to rivet back on. Our plan now is to get the inside cleaned up. Whether we soda blast it or pressure wash it, we're still trying to figure that out. Get it primed, and then move it back and start riveting. We could be riveting next few weeks. Um, realistically, you could spend a year on this, but we'll probably finish this in six months or less. And that's just the horizontal stabilizer, not the whole airplane. Okay? <laughs> so what's, what's after the, the stabilizer then? Are you moving on to one of the big wings? Um, I saw those got moved inside. After this, we're going to do the elevators. And the elevators are right over here. Let me show them to you. Yeah. So the elevators actually were stored outside. So they took the elevators that were originally covered with fabric and they put aluminum over them. That aluminum has since been damaged and it's got corrosion in it. So we're going to take that off, resurface it, so we'll have new aluminum on the elevators when we're finished. We're hoping to start that in probably the next three, four weeks. So everything's different because we don't have a lot of drawings information on it. We're learning as we go. So as we take it apart, we're learning how it went together so we know how to put it back. <laughs> it's overwhelming to be honest with you. Just picking it up and turning it over takes a port truck and six people. Okay, whereas everything else we've had in the past, two people can handle. So it's massive. It's quite a, quite a change for us. Hopefully Bill's not too overwhelmed by the PBY's massive stabilizer because the wings are even bigger. I caught up with Phil and his crew who were preparing to move one section of the wing onto their custom-made stands. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. Do you want to just quickly explain what's going on today? Well, we're going to... We got that forklift set up to lift that end of the wing and we got the other one that we're using to bring in some pallets uh, for cushions because what we're going to do is we're going to take this wing and set it up on its end, the nose, okay, the leading edge. And then we'll slide the big stand along the front and then it'll be on this part of the wing, okay, and then We'll do the same thing with the little one there. And uh, they're real pretty easy. Uh, so uh, what we're doing now is we're bringing over some pallets. Uh, because uh, when we start st um, standing this up on end, I don't know 
how much it's going to move or do something that we don't care that it's doing that way. So I don't expect a lot. I think it's going to go pretty well. We got a really nice uh, setup here and there to lift it up, but still. So we're gonna we're gonna put those pallets down right down the row, and then uh, put a blanket on them, and then we'll put the forklift back over here, and we'll snatch it again on the forks, and uh, and then we'll start lifting it up. Very 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 slow. All right. First order of business, safety, right? So yeah, it's kind of an exciting moment, really. We've been working on getting it ready to do this. We made the stands over there by hand, and um, we've been working on it for a while. So Phil and his team used two forklifts to slowly raise the wing onto its leading edge. After decades of sitting outside, you can see a lot of debris has built up inside the wings. But don't worry, we'll be cleaning those up as part of our restoration. With the wing section in the right position, the crew slide the first stand to the end of the wing. The team can then squeeze the other stand into its place at the other end of the wing. Safely secured on its stands, this part of the PBY wing can now be easily moved around the restoration center and into its restoration bay. With this part of the PBY's wing safely tucked away in its new home in our restoration bay, it's time to leave our restoration team for this update. But don't worry, we'll be back soon to check in with the team with another restoration update. So don't forget to follow and subscribe. And if you're able to, why don't you come and visit our restoration center during your next visit to the Air Zoo. You can plan your visit today at airzoo.org.